Step one, run. Step two, run faster. Hello, folks. Welcome back to Horror Channel. This is Goosebumps Boy, Friendly Neighborhood. And today, we're going to be reviewing another Goosebumps book. And this time, we're going to be doing number 46, How to Kill a Monster. How to Kill a Monster, indeed. We're on a roll now with Goosebumps. So, we're going to try to review as many Goosebumps books as we can. And hopefully, we'll be able to finish the series before the end of the year, as we are nearing near, as we are nearing the end of the series, uh, the original one, that is. So, how to kill a monster. Before I move on to the book itself, and I say a few things about the front cover, as I usually do. This front cover is pretty mysterious and, and uh, kind of like, yeah, suspenseful at the same time. Basically, you're introduced to that room, and basically there's that pink door, and uh, purple, it looks purple too, possibly because of the light in the hallway, and basically you have these huge paws, right, uh, hairy green paws, and basically it has, they have claws at the end of their fingers, and uh, basically it seems from the title of the book, that it's not too presumptuous to assume that there's a monster inside that room, inside that room, and he's trying to come out of the room, a very dark room, right? It's so dark, it's dimly lit. As a matter of fact, it's not lit at all, it's just dark, blue, dark blue. And uh, these green hands are kind of sticking out as if the monster wants to, wants out. He wants to get out of this room, and he wants to escape. And basically, there's a key... In the keyhole of that door, a glowing uh, golden key of some kind. And uh, basically, it looks like the door has been unlocked and now the monster wants to be out. And basically, I really like the choice of colors in that cover. Basically, you have some dark blue that actually makes the title Goosebumps. Some pink in the background that is reflected with the door. And basically... Yes, when we first, uh, as as viewers, if you watch, if you if you're seeing this front cover for the first time, for the first time, you'd want to read this book and want to hear and learn what it is about. So, how to kill a monster? Let's get into the book itself before wasting any more time on tedious details. So, basically, we introduced to our two main characters, Gretchen and her stepbrother Clark. And basically, they're going to visit their grandparents for a week, I believe, or something like this. It takes place in the summer, if I'm not mistaken. Perhaps end of the summer, late summer, early fall. Not entirely sure. That's the vibe we kind of get from this beginning. And basically, the grandparents live it, are living in this castle-like old mansion that is uh, pretty much... <laughs> In a swamp, I kid you not, in Atlanta, Georgia, according to the Goosebumps uh, Phantom website. I know I'm quoting from there a lot. In order to get my, my facts straight, I'm, I'm uh, checking it out every once in a while when, I re when I'm reviewing Goosebumps books. So basically, they're going to go there, and they're, they're going to stay there for a while. And they have a dog with them, uh, Charlie. And basically, yeah, they're going to go to their grandparents while their parents are actually going to, um, they're having some business to attend to. So they're going to have to leave their, their grandchildren and their grandparents. I believe they're going to live, in, they're going to be leaving in the morning. And, uh, yeah, that's basically pretty much it. So basically they're step brother, step, step siblings. Um, yeah, from, uh, they don't have the same parents, I believe. I'm not entirely sure, but yeah, Clark and Gretchen are step-siblings, step-brother and step-sister, right? So basically, they're going to go to their grandparents, and uh, from uh, at some point, there's going to, at the beginning, something is going to happen in the in the swamp. I don't want to tell you what it is. I'll let you find out for yourselves, but it's pretty good. So from very early on, um, something is going to happen in this story, in the story, and that's pretty good, right? Because we getting straight into the story itself. I believe that's pretty good, right? The atmosphere, the swamp, 
this atmosphere is pretty good, pretty scary, pretty alluring, 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 right? Uh, it's pretty nice to have that kind of a setting and goosebumps since uh, all the other books pretty much take place in the suburb. Uh, but yeah, this one will take place in, uh, not in the suburb, but in, uh, in a swamp this time, right? So it's pretty alluring and, uh, it's pretty, it's pretty good, right? It's a, it's a good beginning. And then, uh, so our main characters are going to be staying at their grandparents and basically they're, they're having some, they, they, they're going to be assigned to their bedrooms and, uh, basically, yeah, their grandparents are grandma. Grandma Rose and uh, the grandfather, I forgot his name, um, Grandpa Eddie. And basically, yeah, they kind of, they're nice grandparents, but at the same time, there's something off about them at, uh, in this book. Like, uh, Grandma Rose is making so many pancakes, right? She cooks a lot of pancakes for some reason. And, uh, it seems nice and everything, but it seems kind of weird, like, do they have a tenant they don't know about, and, uh, the children don't know about, for some reason, it seems to be the case, and the title is kind of explicitly, uh, revealing what this secret guest might be, I don't want to spoil the book, but it's quite obvious that there's something that is being kept in a, in a hidden room, in a, in a locked room, and basically, we're not going to know what it is, uh, but we're going to find out about it very, very soon. But basically, there's that room at the end of the hall, if I'm not mistaken. And basically, it's off limits to the kids. So they're not allowed to venture around it. They're not allowed to go anywhere near it, let alone opening the door. But it seems really strange because... Um, yeah, Grandma Rose is cooking all these pies. She's cooking three pies. And, uh, yeah, it, it seems like she she keeps wanting to cook more and 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 more. So it's really strange, right? And basically, yeah, they're worried about this forbidden room, quote unquote, for forbidden room that they're not allowed to go to. And, uh, they give them uh, some some silly excuse that there is uh, a supply closet and uh, basically uh, their grandparents are keeping some fragile things in it and uh, that are easily breakable, that could break easily. So the kids are pretty much allowed to go to any other room except this one, right? So they're basically going to be exploring at some point. They're going to find all these uh, newspapers that box filled with newspapers, those boxes, and uh, then old toys and games. And uh, then at some point, they're going to be playing hide and seek in the house. And uh, at some point, Clark is going to run away and hide. And basically, Gretchen is going to be looking for him all over the, the house. And basically, uh, at some point, um, she's going to hear, she's going to, as she's uh, walking by the hidden, the, the forbidden room, she's going to hear some noise inside. And uh, she's going to assume that Clark is hiding there, right? So she's going to do what she's not supposed to be doing. <clears throat> and uh, she's going to open the door, right? <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, I'm not spoiling. It's quite obvious. It's something like that. It's going to happen. Basically, there is maybe spoiler, maybe not. Not really a spoiler. Title is pretty explicit. It's pretty self-explanatory, self-explanatory. And uh, so since it's so, so self-explanatory, she's going to open the door and she's going to find out about the, the swamp monster. Yeah, so, and then after that, they're going to, as the title of the book suggests, they're going to try and find ways to kill it, right? And then they're going to find out that when they need help, they're going to need help from their, grand, from their grandparents, but their grandparents are kind of not really there. So they're going to be pretty much like on their own to get rid of that monster, and uh, basically, this is uh, the main thing about this book, how to get rid of the monster. 
It's not really an instruction book on how to kill a monster. It's more like what happens. It's kind of a funny title. But it's pretty much how they're going to survive. How are they going to... What are they going to do? Yeah, it's not really an instruction manual. But it's more like a way to defend themselves and fend up this uh, monster. How to kill a monster. What did I think about it? I believe this book was pretty good. It's not my favorite kind of Goosebumps book, but it's pretty good, in my opinion. It had a lot of uh, nice things to offer. And the front cover, I didn't mention it, but it's really it's really similar to Stay Out of the Basement. It's pretty much like a similar concept. Hid forbidden Rome. I don't know why I keep saying Hidden Rome. Forbidden Rome. And basically, something is inside, and uh, they, they are forbidden to go there. But they're going to go there anyway, because children, you can't really trust them. The more you tell them to not to do something, the more they want to do it. So this is basically it. And then you have the final twist after everything happens the way it should, after everything plays out the way it does. Basically, yeah, there's uh, the, 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 final, the final twist is pretty, pretty dark. <clears throat> and uh, it leaves us... <clears throat> Sorry about this. It leaves us, it leaves the main characters, and uh, there's a suspenseful scene at the end. It's kind of like a cliffhanger. It's kind of like, yeah, the scene in which uh, something is going to happen, but then the book ends, and basically that's pretty much it. So I really like this. I like the fact that the book reads well. Our two main characters are pretty enjoyable. Clark is a lot into comics, I believe. He reads comics in uh, in the car while they're um, driving towards their grandparents' house. While they're, while they're driving to, they're going to their grandparents. He's reading the, these comics in, in the car. Yeah, it's pretty, he's pretty enjoyable. Um, Clark is, a, is an enjoyable character. Um, Gretchen is, is enjoyable too. She's a nice uh, character. She's a good girl. But yeah, they, pretty much everything makes sense in this book. I, I don't think there's anything that I didn't like about this book. I think it reads well. It's enjoyable for what it is. And uh, it's kind of underrated too because it's not often that I hear people talking about how to kill a monster. It's like this book kind of slipped through the cracks, so to speak. Not a lot of people mention this. I don't think I ever heard someone saying that this is their favorite book. This book, How to Kill a Monster, is on their top 10 or something like this. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of uh, surprising. Personally, I don't think it's my favorite Goosebumps book from the series, but it definitely has a lot of things to offer, as I mentioned. It's pretty good, in my opinion. It's not the, the best Goosebumps book. And, uh, but it's kind of enjoyable, right? And if I'm not mistaken, the swamp monster, the, the description that is given of him is, uh, it's pretty nice. It's pretty well thought of. I believe he's kind of like a, a crocodile kind of creature, crocodile kind of, uh, swamp monster, crocodile thing. Makes sense since they're living in a swamp. <laughs> but yeah, that, that was good, in my opinion. The claws. I like the fact that the front I like the fact that the front cover doesn't give too too much away. <clears throat> like it's just uh you, you just see the the monster spots and that's pretty much it. His claws. You don't get to see what what he really looks like. <clears throat> but I think that was good. It keeps uh it keeps us in suspense. Um but yeah, that's uh that's pretty much it. Front co the front cover is pretty good, by the way. I don't know if I mentioned that, but Tim Jacobus did an awesome job with all these front covers. I really like I like that. And yeah, that's a good book, in my opinion. So, How to Kill a Monster, perhaps I should move on to the, the actual rating I'd give this book. So, I think I'd give it an 8 out of 10. It's okay. It's a good book. It's not perfect, but... Excuse me. Excuse me. Uh... Sorry about this. Uh, yeah, it's not a perfect book, per se. Like, it's not awesome. Like, it's not the best Goosebumps book I've ever read in my life. But it's definitely theirs. It's on, yeah, definitely on my top 15. Maybe not top 10. Yeah, it's kind of hard to mention. 
to say that this one would be on my top. <clears throat> What's happening? Sorry about this. My voice keeps cracking for some reason. Uh, but yeah, this one is definitely on my top 15, I believe. I'd assume it is. It's not a bad book. It's a good one. And it's enjoyable. And uh, I definitely recommend it to anyone who likes monster books. Especially, like, if you're an early Goosebumps reader and you haven't read a lot and you're, you're young, like you're a teenager, you're, you're like 12 or 13, and you, you don't know much about Goosebumps, you'd like to start somewhere, but you don't really know where, definitely check this one out. could be a good way to start the series with this one, and it's enjoyable for what it is. So, yeah, 8 out of 10 for me for How to Kill a Monster, and I believe that's pretty much it because I said everything I wanted to mention about this book. What about you folks? What did you think about How to Kill a Monster? Did you like this book? Did you hate this book? Is it your favorite Goosebumps book? Is it your worst Goosebumps book? Please let me know in the comment section down below, folks. I really would like to hear about what you have to say about this book as we like to chat about as we like to chat about Goosebumps books in here and uh, your favorite books and so on and so forth. And uh, yeah, I guess that's pretty much it. So 8 out of 10 for me. And uh, I guess uh, I'll see you on the next review for another Goosebumps book review. Thank you so much for watching and see you on the next review. Goodbye, folks. Stay safe. Uh, see you later. Take care. This whole channel for you. Signing off. Home Alone with the Monster. Gretchen and her stepbrother, Clark, hate staying at their grandparents' house. Grandpa Eddie is totally deaf. Is totally deaf. And Grandma Rose is obsessed with baking. Plus they, live, plus, they live in the middle of a dark, muddy swamp. Things couldn't get any worse, right? Wrong. Because there's something really weird about Grandma and Grandpa's house. Something odd about that room upstairs. The one that's locked. The one with the strange noises coming from it. Strange growling. Strange growling noises. Ugh.